this is the October 7th Raleigh Historic Development Commission Executive Committee meeting. And to answer your question, Gaston, yes, it is intended to be. Um, typically, when we're not having remote meetings, it has been the Wednesday prior to the Tuesday meeting. Um, so closer to the meeting, but because of the remote nature and needing longer time for people to be able to, you know, sign up and all of that. We bumped it a week um, so that we can get the agenda up uh, sooner. Right, we have four, but, um, but we're ready to go. Um, I think first thing up is we need a one, two, three topic. Uh, we're brainstorming. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Earlier, we were discussing whether there was any Halloween possibilities, and then we were discussing the totally unrelated. We're engaging in a joint survey with the LGBTQ, all the other initials, community on a project, and it might be an opportunity just to give us a brief overview of what, what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're involved in the LGBT community. Wait, I, I can certainly, I can else. certainly, but I can do that. I'll report out on it anyway, since the, this, the business meeting is on the 19th and our 1st community event is on the 14th. So I'll be able to report how that went and I can talk about that. I could also make it a little bit. More generic and talk about historic context reports in general. As 1 way. Because we've done, we're doing the LGBTQIA now. We've done, we did Method Community, we've done Kit Homes, we did one on Leith Valland, um, whatever you want to do. We also talked before, uh, before everybody was online and we were in the uh, just friendly discussion area about seeing if Heather knew of any historic related ghost stories. Fitting on a Halloween kind of historic image. Uh, Genre, but I don't, I don't know. None spring to mind. They haven't seen any mystery lights in the belfry of the old Capitol building recently. I think that each culture has their own and I think we probably not. It, we'd spend more time figuring it out than it would resolve for us. And Halloween is two weeks away. So, or three weeks away. Think about it for next year. <laughs> So Tanya will come up with something that she thinks will be good and um, what we can do to help you do that would be great. Okay. All right. Well, it'll, it'll, it'll be on historic, uh, historic context reports, highlighting the LGBTQIA and um, either I will do it or Colette will do it. And Colette um, has a really good point that October is LGBT history month. So. Ta-da, that's been said. Gaston, you were right all along. It's all his, also Hispanic Heritage Month. Right. Oh, there's so much. And that's Rex amazing. already posted in the SPHO um, your meeting. Yes, yeah, I sent I sent, sent that to him after after our research committee. That's the fastest yesterday. he's moved in the four years I've lived in. Just, it was really fast. I was <laughs> really like, impressed. So. Yeah. Did we do one on Lustron? Ever yet? Um, no, there is a, a one, two, three. Yeah. No, we have not. Well, maybe we'll, when that deal is done, hopefully we we could use that as a way of highlighting okay. the deal. Done. Right. It might be interesting to put the facts and figures in there. Something we may want to consider going to city council on the three minute public comment section. Say thank you for making this happen, along with Preservation North Carolina. Make a joint appearance just to say thanks and show them what yeah. we did. Oh, ooh, while while you're still here, Gaston, before you have to leave, I should have fingers crossed um, the um, the final of the annual report and work program with your letter in it and all of that for y'all to vote on on the nineteenth. Okay, I will I will add it to the agenda because I just realized I forgot to do it. Um, Actually, I think I sent the report, but 
sent the email before I realized it might be ready. Um, and if we don't get it, then we'll just pull it. But with a goal of, and I'll put a date, you should be able to then um, present middle of November to the um, city council. We actually so, present something. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so right. You said you had a. I have to go. Board. I have to go have my teeth done things too. Things done to my teeth. Good luck. It's going to be an interesting weekend. Thank you all very much. I'm going to leave my screen on. So technically there's quorum. You just won't okay. hear my voice. You hear my dog snoring. All right. I'll send a follow up email. Um, in the same vein on the Lustron House 123 topic, um, I think doing one on the previous use of our revolving loan funds at some point would be good as that comes available. I'd like to get some interest and ideas from people on how we want to use that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and since you spoke, I did under discussion items add that I would do a staff report on the RHDC city budget. You would, when we met Katie, you had asked if I could do that. So yeah, this, this month is a good. That'd since, be great. Since we don't have any rezoning cases. Okay, awesome. That'd be really good. Thank you so much, Janine. Do you want me to just walk through the items? Sure. Okay. Definitely. All right. So under unified development ordinance reviews, um, I've got an update on eight hundred three Glenwood Avenue in Glenwood, Brooklyn. So that was one where we sent the RHDC sent a letter to the property owner saying, hey, we noticed you know, you're not doing these things. Please start taking care of your property or we may have to you know, move forward on the, um, the demol demolition by neglect status. So it's been just over six months and I'll report out on what the status is and then y'all can decide if you, you know, what you want to do, um, it's, it could go either way. It could be a wait or it could be go ahead and proceed. The property owner still intends to sell, um, but uh, most of the work has been happen, happening on the property itself as opposed to the house as he preps it for sale. Under sealed G duties, um, Colette will present the uh, Pitties Mont or the William Hand Brown House. Research committee just approved moving that forward yesterday morning. So there'll be a presentation on that. Um, she will also do a presentation on, uh, well, briefly on the Oakwood Historic Overlay District Report. And that is a, <laughs> At the very end of a long, long process um, of getting that done, it got it got stalled at the final proofing. Well, it got stalled a number of times for many, you know, several reasons over the years. But the last stall was staff doing the final proofing and pulling things back together. So it's ready for y'all to um, uh, adopt, and she'll explain the history oh. of. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, question on that. I'm just curious. What is the intention of that report? What's the kind of. It know? so right now, the, um. The, the nomination form for Oakwood, the bulk of Oakwood was created back in the mid 70s. And so it does not 2, two important things. It doesn't have. It doesn't have an inventory list of all the properties. Like all historic district ports do now, and it also doesn't have a defined period of significance. So the intent of the report was primarily to get that inventory and period of significance, but it it has more. Um, it's got a lot more stuff in there than we normally would, because um, it's based in large part on work that Matthew Brown did. That includes you know social history for each property as well as the architectural description. So it's a very um, robust document um, that includes both the technical pieces that we need as well as additional information. Okay. And 
will report that the Thompson Jones Anderson Allen House was designated a Raleigh Historic Landmark um, on the 5th. Yay. And then I'll talk about the budget and then you'll have your committee reports. And, and I'm adding um, hopefully the annual report, which is not on that list. And so unless there's something else I forgot, that is it. All right, so um, we will, one thing that staff is going to start uh, doing again is providing y'all with um, suggested motion language in advance um, to help with some of these things that don't come up all the time. Um, we've got, we used to do it all the time for our landmark designation applications and then not sure what happened. I think there was one chair who said, I've got it. And then I stopped doing it and then never started back. So, um, um, we can, we can do that. We'll just send it via email in advance. Um, to hopefully make things go a little bit more smoothly. One more question, if I may. Yes. Um, any word on where we stand with. Um, in person meetings, I've just been hearing metrics are looking good as far as COVID numbers. No, just where we're radios, at. Radios, yep, radio silence. Okay. And my guess is that we'll have one once the decision is made, we'll probably have a month to make a transition. Right. Okay. And we shall see. Okay, chatty much. <laughs> okay, I actually did just think of something. Um, oh, good. Yeah, this is kind of random, but I um I've been doing the Raleigh Neighborhood College um recently. I was curious if we ever have done anything with that part of community engagement. I guess they they just changed. It's what's like the Department of Community Engagement now. Th there is the there is now a specific office for that, and the. The neighborhood college, I think, has lived different places throughout its existence, as I recall. I feel like I presented once in the 14 years I've been here, like as a staff, um, but it's not on my radar. Is that what you meant? Like participated as an yeah. entity or a department? Yeah, because I actually I did it a few years ago and I know like Sarah Ellis from planning came and um, gave a great talk, but we only touched like very briefly on historic preservation because someone had specific questions about it. Um, but I didn't know, I mean, not to like suggest anything that would make more, more work for staff, but um, from a community engagement perspective. But yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, access people. No, actually it's a great idea because um, <clears throat> that's who yeah. we want. I mean, we want everybody to know, but the people who are, Going out and on purpose, getting involved in their communities, sharing. Um, who's the? Who would, who's the? Is there a person that's been your contact? Uh, yeah, it's Luis Oliveri Roberts in the community oh, okay. engagement. Okay. Yeah, he's done it since I think all twenty years they've done it. So. Yeah. Katie, could you tell us what that is for people like me who have no idea? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The Raleigh Neighborhood College is a um, program that the city does for, for free for residents. And um, it's they've changed the format since COVID, of course. But I did it three years ago when it was in person. We would go first and have dinner. And then there would be a series of staff presentations from all of the different city departments. Or we would go on different field trips, kind of. like um, We did actually go to Mordecai House on a field trip as part of our parks, recreation, cultural resources, but basically it's just to give citizens like access to information about the services that the city of Raleigh government provides to them and really like the responsibilities of the city. And then you kind of, you graduate and do a project on to do something to engage your neighborhood or um, encourage people to go to board commission meetings and stuff like that. So how do you find out about it? Like I'm a new I, resident of Raleigh. And I heard about it. That would have been helpful four years ago. 
I heard about it through word of mouth because I used to be in, um, or we're still semi-active, but just like a grassroots like, political advocacy group. And I knew someone um, who used to be on the Historic Cemeteries Advisory Board, Amy Howard. She had done it and told me about I, it. I just met her. Oh, really? She's great. <laughs> but um, yeah, she told me about it. And so when I first started getting interested in local government, I, I did it. And But I thought now, since I have more experience and have a different perspective from being on the commission that it would be good for me to go back and do it so do i it. think it sounds great i think we could not if we could participate that would be fabulous that's something certainly i think board can help staff do because i think we care about that but i also think the city should i don't know if tanya so, you could put a, a, a buzz in the ear of one of your buddies at the city and say hey i'll come there's this city's gonna have a million people in five years and well, I, I do think about it from Katie because I'm on the board of the RHDC. Yeah, no, you're right. I, and I think that um, that's one of the reasons why the Office of Community Engagement was created. I happened to be on their <clears throat> web page. I don't remember why I was on their web page on the city site. And I noticed that they have links for new residents. So, like, for things for people to know. So, I think. Um, uh, as an organization, we're trying to do better at that. Um, well, the CAC was the CAC part of that that was disbanded. No. Um, well, the CACs were no. The Office of Community Engagement has only been created like less than a month. It's a very brand new uh, office, but housing and neighborhoods um, did a lot. Has done. And it still does a lot of the community engagement for the city that had representatives for each of the, the right, CACs. It was eliminated. And I know they're yeah. trying to replace it. So I'm just trying to like the office of community engagement sounds like the place that should be overseeing community engagement. <laughs> you know, like these anyway, I, I know it's another topic, but I, I just like, whoa, I'm on four committees and I'm very involved in grassroots Raleigh because that's, I got nothing else to do and um, it's interesting to me. And this is the first time hearing about, and I, and I am on a, a with a, working with a group to replace what the CAC would be. And um, I know the gentleman who was asked to lead it and I know Marion's commitment to it. So I'm like, whoa, how come? Anyway, so whoever you know, maybe put a bug in their ear that the community doesn't know anything about this. Be great. Yeah, I think historically it hasn't been a uh, super, super well advertised um uh program but i think more people are hearing about it so which is good because then they'll yes. keep doing it and more people will learn the stuff yeah, i think that's a, a great yeah i'm gonna tell people about it yeah please please do and and i will i um, i'm gonna put, put a sign on the back of my car instead of just merit it's gonna say just enrolled in this <laughs> okay. Okay. drive around and let people know As you can see, 7.45 a.m. meetings make me funny. That's all I can tell you. That was it's, you know, I'm just excited. Is it 7.45 now and not 7.30? So. <laughs> <laughs> the 15 minutes makes a big difference. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. With that in mind, unless y'all have anything else, we can drink our coffee. I will follow up with the additional items and the, uh, the, the chosen top one, two, three topic, just so you've got it in your emails, but then I'll create the board docs agenda. And we'll... would, you, would you mind in our board, in our regular board meetings, also bringing up the college that Katie, but I mean, I thought that was very informative and I think we have a group that might at least talk about it, not as part of our responsibility, but just awareness, like, oh, here's something I'm aware of, you know? Yeah, Kate, Katie, maybe you can bring that up at the end under commission reports. Yeah, for sure. Reports. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. I'm going back to sleep. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Jane, I'm going to let you officially say we're done. Okay. We're meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, Have a good day. Bye.